Hey everyone. So today I'm going to be covering the top three movies that have impacted me the most. And the reason I'm not doing top five is because I, last, I spent the last 45 minutes here trying to think of the next two and I couldn't really think of two that really topped each other. So these are my top three. First, first movie is The Return of the King. And specifically this movie makes it not because of the cinematography, not because I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, but specifically because of the scene they did where Rohan is riding to save Gondor. And they're lined up at the fields and they're looking at the massive army. And the uh, King Theoden is giving the speech that these they're most likely going to die. This battle, this war, they're probably going to die. And they're riding to the world's ending, but they know that this is the best hope to save mankind. And even though this other nation of Gondor didn't come during their time of need, they're here during Gondor's time of need. And man, that scene just gets me. It's even getting me now, just thinking about it. So if you haven't watched The Lord of the Rings, that is a great nine-hour time sink for the series. I highly suggest. It's worth it. Um, if you're crazy like we are, you can watch the extended editions. <laughs> that's like 15 hours. It's pretty nuts. Uh, so that's number one, would be Return of the King. Number two, the movie that really impacted me also was... I'd have to say uh, Schindler's List. If you haven't watched that, it's an older movie, black and white. You can see a young Liam Neeson. And it's in that movie where it's I'm seeing this guy. And it's, it's creepy because it's real life. This guy actually existed. And he's using his wealth and his power to save Jews from the Nazis. And you can listen to my summary, but that doesn't do it justice. You really got to watch the film. Watch the way he portrayed it. Watch the way he did it. And the, the part that really gets me at the ending there is where he's essentially given away all of his wealth to save as many Jews as possible. And at the end, they organize a car for him because they know that uh, the, uh, the allies are overtaking and he's, get, he's getting on his way out. And he's like, did I do enough? And uh, there are so many people there that he saved already. And he's still thinking, did I do enough? And And what kind of got me was the reason that's so powerful is because he spent his life accumulating massive wealth. This guy's a business owner, owns multiple factories, and he, he just runs everything at a loss just so he can justify pulling people out of the camps. And at the very end, when he has almost nothing left to his name, he's still saying, did I do enough? And man, those scenes are like really deep. Uh, the last one I'd probably say is... Fight Club. And the reason a Fight Club has such an impression on me is because one is that I believe in the darker self. I believe that there are two people that exist within everyone. There's one side of us that we see and it's the civilized side of us where we're walking around. This is our everyday life. But I think because society doesn't need the darker side, it doesn't need the warrior side of us, the side of us that marched alongside brothers in arms and we have to go take out the enemy uh, with swords or spears or bows and arrows. And that side of us doesn't isn't needed in most of the free world anymore. And so in that side, I, I believe that's I exist. I think I felt that side a lot during Taekwondo. It's, there's a lot of this aggression that comes out. And if you haven't experienced that before, I highly suggest doing combat sports so you can feel it and you can train it. Because if it comes out and you've never trained it before, it's like, this is really new. But if you have done it before, then it's like, oh, there's a dark side of myself. And in this movie, essentially, this guy is, um, is spent his whole life being nice. And his darker side manifests and takes over and forces him to become strong, for lack of a better word, and forces him to live a life that's free of these other responsibilities. And... I have not watched, watched that movie in a long time thinking about it now, but I remember that movie really inspired me that like that side just exists within people. And sometimes it comes out the way it does like in the movie. Other times it comes out like in a lot of the animes I've been talking about. So I always thought it'd be cool. Like when I, people who watch martial arts or watch sparring, talk about people having a switch. Like my little brother, Kyle has a switch where I remember there's a black belt who came in and he's, he's watching his spar and watching his train. And in general, he was like, you know, with like Chris or with Keith, you can kind of see like that fighter side of them already when they're walking around and they're nice. 
But for someone like Kyle, who's, who's so patient with everyone and so kind and so caring, and he talks well and he's, you know, inspiration to kids. And then you see him in the ring and he, the way he keops and the intensity he's hitting people with, it's just a whole nother side of Kyle. You like, you didn't even know existed. And then he saw that for the first time and he was like, whoa, that's different. And so I believe everyone has a dark side of them. And I'm a, like I said, I'm a big proponent of people training that side. So they're used to it. And uh, for movies four and five, I couldn't really think of too many other good ones. I know right now my, my fan favorite is John Wick because I like the character. I like Keanu Reeves in general, but I also like the character he plays. He's just a guy who's trying to live his life and be left alone and he developed this amazing skill set. And people brought him back into the world that he tried to escape and then he made everyone pay for it. And I thought, wow, what a pretty cool action movie that is. But I also like it because the gun handling is accurate and because the fight scenes are accurate. Like Keanu actually trains with stuntmen to make the fight scenes real. It's not some third person, you know, in there. Um, that and then I guess if since I'm doing that fourth one, then the fifth one's probably the Matrix because I really believe in, in where if something exists in the mind, you can make it real in real life. And so for Neo in the movie, he it, when you're in the Matrix, as long as you believe you can do it, you can do it. And so that one stuck with me and I, I thought for a long time, I was like, I think, I think the world is really like that. And so I would imagine training and just having that bleed over to my real life. And that really helped with visualizations actually. So I started this at the top three, I guess it's the top five, top five off the top of my head, but a lot of those fourth and fifth spots are really close tie. Um, but the top three, I think are those Lord of the Rings, Schindler's List and Fight Club. What are your top three? Link those below. If you guys have similar interest, please like and subscribe if you like what I'm putting out. That really helps me out a lot. Let's me know I'm going in a good direction. That's the video for today, guys. I will see you all tomorrow.